Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'd like to make a nice big quilt. So let's pick out a pattern and get started. We have lots of fun patterns here. And most of these are from Cozy Quilt Designs because theirs are very easy to follow. I think I'd like to try this one. I haven't made it before, but it has stars and it's made with batiks. And that's what I'm gonna use is batiks. And this uses, it uses a strip set. So we can make all the way up to a king. I think I'm gonna make the queen because it's 80 by 80 inches, which is nice and big. Now I need to pick out a strip set. We have a nice variety of strip sets here. And this is one I've really been wanting to try out. I love the jewel tones. I love purples and greens and aquas. And these will make really nice stars. Now we need to pick out a background fabric. So we need something that these will all look good against. We have a lot of what we call plain batiks. They're not completely solid, but they have just a little bit of pattern on them. And we have a whole section here. And I really think this will look good on a light, light blue. I want it light enough that there will be contrast, but I don't want it really, really light. I think that has kind of a blue violet haze to it. That will look really good. The only other fabric we need is one for an outside border, and we'll probably get a batik that has a little more print. We have lots of those to choose from, but I'm gonna wait till after we make the patchwork quilt, then we can audition some different fabrics to go around the outside. So let's take these over to the workroom and get started cutting so we can get started sewing. I've got my background fabric all ironed up. So I'm gonna make the queen size. I'm gonna need three and three eighths yards of background. And this same background fabric goes for border number two. So I'm gonna need a little over four yards. You need quite a bit of fabric. The first border is gonna be pieced out of some of the strips from the strip set. So that's gonna be kind of fun. And there's no picking and choosing what's gonna go where. It's just gonna be potluck scrappy and it's going to make a really nice blend so i'm going to follow the pattern and i can't give you all the sizes to cut because this is not my pattern but i'm going to get everything cut up and then we'll be ready for the next step everything is all cut out and almost ready to sew we do need to mark the back of these with a little pencil line. So there's a whole lot that get drawn like this. The easiest way to do this is to find the 45 inch line on your ruler here. Let's use this 45 right here. And we're gonna point it right to the corner here. You have to move it back a little because the pencil has a little bit of width if you want to draw right in the corner. So slide it back a little bit. I'm exaggerating there, not quite that much. Get everything lined up. And we're going to be sewing right on that line. So we're going to mark a lot of them facing this way. And then there's a smaller stack that get pointed the other way. So draw all those lines and then we'll take everything over to the sewing machine. Here are all the pieces we need for the first block. I've got this placed exactly how it's going to fit on there, and I'm going to stitch just to the outside of that pencil line. Now I'm going to go right down the pencil line here. It's right along the diagonal. And you'll see I'm chain piecing. And even though I'm just doing one block, I'm still gonna chain piece these pieces here. Now, I normally don't mark a line across the middle of squares like this. I find that if you start at the beginning and just aim towards the other end, it comes out just fine. You can draw a line on your machine or put a piece of painter's tape on there. And that way you can keep it lined up. But it's pretty easy on these small squares to go right along the diagonal. Now we're gonna take these all over to the ironing board and press them flat. 
Now we're going to open this up. You can see that everything lines up. This is lined up right on top of itself over there. And we're going to press it. And then we're going to do that for all of these pieces. And then we're going to trim away the bottom two layers. To trim off the excess back here, I like to use scissors because I can pick these all up, do it by hand, and I don't have to take my cutting blade and pick it up and put it down and pick it up and put it down. So I just find that this is plenty fast enough. And I'm just trimming off the excess so we have a quarter inch seam allowance. So if this is not cut perfectly straight, it doesn't matter because they're sewn perfectly straight. So this is just a quicker method. Now we're going to put these three into a row and then sew the rows together. You can iron this one right now if you want, but I find that it finger presses really easily. There's a seam allowance coming together here. So this seam here, it wants to go towards the center. So I'm just gonna help it along. And this one again wants to go towards the center. So I'm gonna help it along. Now we will sew this onto there. And then we'll sew this one onto the bottom. Now I'm going to give it a nice steam pressing. And that block is done. Now there's quite a few of this block, and then we have one other block to make. You'll notice that I, I stitched this with this piece on the top, and I didn't even check to see if anything was matched here. I used the hope and, hope and sew method. But you can see it made almost a perfectly straight line there and a perfectly straight line there without even looking. They're really easy to match because the pieces aren't very long. And I just found that sewing with this on the top, it helps you line it up really easily. These are all the pieces we need for the remaining block. So I'm going to stitch them together, iron them up, trim off the excess just like we did for the first block. Now we're gonna have to iron and trim off that extra there. And this one, iron and trim off the, that extra there. Then we'll bring them back and stitch them to this part. This block is even easier than the last one. We're just gonna stitch this seam and then stitch that last seam. Okay, so I need to make a small amount of these and a lot of the other block because I'm making a great big quilt. But the good news is they're really quick to make. So I'm gonna finish all these up and then I'll show you how to lay them out. I'd like to give you an option if you don't like to draw lines on the back of all of your solid squares. I seem to always be in a hurry so I can get to my next project and I don't like to do extra steps. So here is what I tried and it works for me. I'm lining these up on these two sides and I wanna sew from this corner to that corner there. So if I put this right up at the needle and then I line this far corner down here on my tape. I, drew, I put some straight tape on there. And then as I sew, I can lift this up and I can see it and I can see it the whole way. And that works pretty well. So anytime you try something like that, do a few blocks and see if they actually work for you. Iron them open, put them all together. And if that method works, it can save you a lot of time. I have all of my blocks pieced. Again, we have a whole bunch of this kind of block and then less of these, which are gonna go around the edges. So let me show you how you lay this out so that the quilt 
looks like a star. It's really, really fun. So four of these are going to go together. And after I get them all laid out, I may change up the color so that I have a nice blend in the middle. And then we're just gonna keep going. Basically, see how this has a diagonal? We're just alternating the directions of the diagonal. So you can just lay your whole quilt out like this and you will see these stars just start popping out right in the middle here. I'm not gonna lay out the whole quilt, but this is enough so you can start to see these big stars throughout the quilt. Really fun. So the whole middle of the quilt is gonna be made up of this kind of block. Now around the edges, we've got these that have less patchwork. And look what happens when you put these in the corners. It finishes out the stars that are all around the edge. So this keeps going like this, and it completes these stars. I've already pieced the borders together, so these are going to go next around the quilt here. Then there's going to be a solid border, just like the background. And then we're going to want to pick something that goes around the outside of that. So I pulled a couple of choices. And I do like to lay these out so I can get a little better feel of what the whole quilt is gonna look like. Now, this one would be really nice. I like that color a lot, it looks really good. It changes it quite a bit if you go with the lavender. If you want green, that's, that's really good too. Aqua, that's actually one of my choices. I think I'm gonna go with either the aqua. Now, if you want a richer quilt, go with the dark border. That gives it a much more jeweled look. But I think for spring that I'm either gonna go with the aqua or the lavender, because these make it look much, much lighter. The other thing I'm gonna do when I lay out all the blocks is I just simply lay them out here. If I come to a section like this where it's almost all purple, I'm probably going to make a switch. I'm gonna balance out the colors. I like to have all of my stars with four different colors to make it really colorful. So I'm gonna lay out the quilt, stitch everything together, and then we'll get it quilted up. I couldn't be any happier with how the quilt turned out. I wish I'd made it even bigger. This was so much fun. It's such a simple, simple procedure. There's just the two blocks. So maybe you can see the blocks here. Let me see if I can even find them. This is the one block right here. That's a corner block, that's a corner block, that's a corner block. Then here is the other block. So there were quite a few of these and then less of these, but look how nicely they frame it and that pieced border, really easy to do. Just tons of fun. So this only took one jelly roll. I think I used 38 strips took about three and a half yards of the background for there and for the um, little border here, about a yard and a half for this big outer border. I used a blue binding, another batik, and look how the quilting shows on the back side there. Really, really, really cool quilting. It doesn't show much from the front and that's how I like my quilts. I like the quilting just to be just a shadow, just showing just a little bit. And this is a floral pattern called Wild Roses, the quilting pattern. So much fun, really enjoyed this quilt. Thanks for watching our tutorial today. Happy quilting.